Well, here we are at the end of January 2021, and we're just about to get into the full swing of propagation for yet another season. Dahlias are certainly as popular as they ever have been, and we're getting a lot of new inquiries at the moment, with one of the most regularly asked questions being as to what the difference is between getting a pot tuber, a mini plant, or a garden ready plant. So hopefully over the next few minutes I'll explain a little bit about the alternatives and a quick run through of how our season develops from now. What we have in front of us here are field tubers that we lifted in November, cleaned up and trayed up and put on heat just prior to Christmas. And you can see already they're in a good flush of growth with plenty cuttings all ready to take. It's important to us that we set them away this early because of the numbers of cuttings that we have to take over the next four month period. For most dealer enthusiasts out there, it's not important to have them set away this early. It really depends on the number of cuttings you need to get off them during the season. And in many cases, it would be just advisable to get uh, many plants which can be potted up and grown on, planted out when the risk of frost is over, and then by the end of the season, you'll be able to lift them and you'll have a field tube that you can then keep from the following year. But I will be explaining that as I go through. Now, many of you will be used to find field tubers in shops, etc., or lifting your own, you know, which will generally be you know, a good, reasonable size. Um, and in the main, we use these for our propagating. 6,000 of them will lift in November, bench them up, and we'll be taking cuttings from those right the way through till around about May. Okay. For purposes of our mail order business, we've always offered pot tubers. Now, pot tubers specifically grown um, for propagation purposes, really. That's what we, you know, intend them for, and that's what we generally sell them as. Although quite a few people out there will want to get these just to put in the garden, um, but you know, we're sort of promoting these effectively as a good source of propagating material, so we can build build numbers up. They're grown through the season in a nine centimeter pot, which produces a nice compact tuber, which is um, ideal for posting out because yeah, they're not too heavy, but still you know, productive. Um, and also it means you can get quite a few on a propagating bench as well. You can get quite a lot more of those in a, in a seed tray than you can a big field tuber. However, tubers will always vary in what they'll, what they'll give you over the season. Um, so you get the likes of David Howard here, which produces quite a stringy tuber, but will still be productive because at the point where my thumb is there, you can see that'll be where the source of cutting material will be coming from as the eyes develop. The same at that point there. You know, so that tuber there, it's got four or five potential sources of eyes, so cutting productivity should be quite good on that. Um, tubers like Wynnum Diane and other varieties will tend to produce a much more compact, plump tuber. Okay, um, but again, nice and compact. You know, those that you get about 12 in your standard seed tray, just making sure you obviously label them all up. However, we'll always get some varieties that are either by nature of the genetics of them or by the fact we've not been able to get enough cutting material to set tubers away, always produce a very small tuber. Thankfully, this is one of my minority, but even the smallest tuber can actually yield quite a number of cuttings. 
okay so we've actually already had a couple of cuttings off this one and by making sure we don't cut them right down to the base you can hopefully see there that there's already new cutting material developing in the leaf axle okay so in theory this one tiny tuber but small about the size of a ping pong ball could actually yield us through the season 10 20 cuttings or more okay as long as we look after and maintain it so that's the pot tubers for you okay but we'd never obviously send anything out as small as that and um, that was just as a demonstration that even small tubers can be productive in some cases we'll get more off that than a bigger field tuber but there I'm just showing you as well how many little pot tubers you can actually get in a tray and you can see the yield of cutting material we will get off that When it comes to many plants, um, these are rooted cuttings, effectively. So there's a couple of examples of early cuttings that we've taken there, okay. Um, these would have been taken about four weeks ago, I think just probably prior to Christmas. Okay, so growth at this time of year is sort of quite slow. But they're developed into nice, healthy plants. Whereas pot tubers we might only sell around about four or 5,000, when it comes to mini plants, we sell around about 60 or 70,000. Um, with these, you really need the facilities to pot these up and grow them on. Um, so with su supply would normally be from the end of March through to mid-May. Ideally, needing the way we'd need a greenhouse, pot them up into a nine to a 12 centimetre pot and grow on prior to planting out when the risk of frost is over in your area. Okay. Um, some people think they need to have these very early on, like the end of March. There's no need for that. Um, once the light levels get better, as in after the spring equinox effectively, we find the cutting material that is produced off the plants is actually much better. Um, the plants themselves are much more evenly rooted because the cutting size we're taking is much more even to start with and growth development is an awful lot better. Um, from a, for, the, for garden purposes, to be honest, and just where you're going to plant like one of each variety out, we would always advocate getting the mini plants. To a degree, you've got much more control over a, how a cutting grows than you do have a pot to you because you know when you've got that one shoot coming away. Um, basically this one, this is actually one of the new, new varieties, it's Tracy Diane, okay. Um, coming away on one stem there, when you've got about four or five leaves developed on that, or five you know, pairs of leaves, you're approaching the point where you can consider taking the tip out of it to make the plant grow much bushier. Obviously this stage of the season, I don't have any garden ready plants available, um, but garden ready, really intended for those people who do not have the facilities for growing on, they don't have a greenhouse, or they don't want to have the hassle of potting up. Um, so those are available. Generally sold in a pot slightly smaller than that. Sadly, this time of the year, I haven't got those particular pots available. We generally use a seven centimetre paper pot the plants will be, have been potted up in those two to three weeks prior to us posting them out. And they will be of a size where they can be go straight into the garden. Now, we only send those out the first two weeks of June. Um, so in theory, most areas are free of frost from that point. So hence garden ready, they can go straight out. Whether it be many plants or garden ready, you should all expect flowers from them. Um, this year from around about mid-August onwards.
So I'm hoping that's been fairly helpful to you all in working out you know, what's what and what your best option is. Um, we're always here to help and we will do our best and you know to all you again to all you daily enthusiasts thanks for watching and and happy growing